Hello everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Teresa with Keep in Touch Crafts and I um, am coming to you live from Oak Grove, Minnesota. Thank you for joining me. Um, tonight I'm going to be using some nesting dies, some of the framelits, and um, I'm going to give you some ideas on how you can use those to make a really fun layout of a card called a tunnel card. And um, it Hopefully we'll just give you some more uses for those dies that you probably have in your stash. If you do some die cutting, you know that those are a very versatile tool to have on hand. Um, so I'm going to be giving you an idea of what to do with those. And hopefully it'll be something that, um, that'll broaden your use of those dies. Um, we do have a little special going on right now with our mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I will be showing you that and um, kind of some uses for it. But um, I will be showing you some uh, things at the very end. I'm going to give you some samples of what I'm doing tonight and some variations. But let's get started on a really fun card uh, that has um, a few steps to it, but it's a I always thought it was a creative way to use some of those dies. And I want to thank um, Paper Pixie is the website that I found that uh, was kind of showing some of this. So I just loved her. Uh, way of doing this card and you can add your own spin on it kind of like I did tonight uh, And let me know if you have any questions. So let's go down to our work surface here and we are going to get started um, I'm gonna well, I should probably do this first I suppose so we have a sale going on in March if you do Want to try the mini stamp cut and emboss machine that is going to be on sale and I haven't seen this good of a sale on this for you know it uh, it's the only sale that I really know of that they've had for it um, where they are discounting the price so instead of sixty dollars it's going to be forty eight dollars and they also have a bunch of die sets that are going to work with this set or with this die cutter uh, the stamp the mini um, that they're bringing back some bundles so that you have some varieties um, and they are discounting those as well so it's a great time to get started on die cutting if that's not something that you've done too much of because you just maybe haven't had the opportunity or wanted to put the the money into it but if you're ready to possibly take that leap then um, this would be a great time because they do have a really good sale on it. Um, like I said, it's discounted. And then we have a bunch of sets there. We call them a bundle if it's a stamp set with a coordinating either a die set or a punch. But these are going to be some that are discounted. Um, a lot of really nice die sets to choose from. And these will all work with that mini die machine. I'm going to grab mine. This is the mini. It is just such a handy tool. And if you're an established uh, crafter, then you're probably, you know, liking it for when you travel. You can take it with you. It's a little bit easy to tote around than the large one. I'll show you the difference here in size. Okay. Um, I don't know if that gives you an idea. I'll zoom out a little bit more. All right. So it's a lot easier to carry this little guy around and pack it and tote it than it is the big one. So that is an advantage of it. And it can sit on your desktop, so it's really uh, convenient and handy to have. So if you're going to do a quick die, um, if, you know, as long as it is that smaller size. So that is one thing I wanted to show you is, like this one, it has that wide of an opening. I believe it's six inches. And that's our regular size stamp cut and emboss machine, which I use all the time. And the smaller one has a lot smaller opening. And so the dies, you just don't want them to be too wide. The paper and the dies can't be wider than, let's see how, um, it is just under four inches. So I would say three and three fourths is the maximum width that you can use with this machine and it does come just like the other one does with the plates and everything to use with it. Um, I'll show you here. So we always have, oh goodness, mine are like beat up because I've used them so much. Um, this is our number one and then you have, whoa, oh my goodness. 
The number two plates are the clear plates that you sandwich your dies between. You have a number four plate to use with embossing folders that are the, I believe, the 3D ones. And your embossing folders that aren't 3D, you use the number three plate. Um, so these are the plates that we have at this point. Um, hopefully sometime we can get a magnetic one, which is a handy thing to have as well. And right now what you can do is you can use embossing folders and you put your paper in here and put the proper sandwich which is easily laid out for you it's right on these plates what you use if you have an embossing folder a standard embossing folder you're going to put a, a three and a one so you know that this is the three you would put your sandwich here and then you would put your number one plate on top of that and you that's just the perfect thickness to run through the machine and then you break, have that, maybe I should show you. Um, I'll show you quick. I didn't really plan to do this, but I bet I should have, huh? Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little scrap here and I'll show you kind of how this works. Of course, there are many sizes. We have the regular widths for the embossing, the regular um, standard size stamp and cut and emboss machine. And this is the mini, um, obviously, as I was showing you, you use three and one. And I put it here in between there. I don't think this is a 3D um, um, embossing folder. Let's see what it does here. I'll try to get it to work. Of course, now that I have it closed, you know, it's always best to open it so that it can go through. Oh, goodness. <laughs> So it happens when I just do things on the fly here. All right, let me, sorry guys, I just had to stand up and move my stuff out of the way so that it'll work. All right, so I have the sandwich made and we have it sitting nice and flat and then we're gonna push it through. Oh gosh, I'm just beating up my work surface here. <laughs> I don't have the right, um, I don't know, it's not really in the best spot here, and maybe it's not even the right size. This might be the 3D, so let me try a different plate. Oh, that's what happens when I do things and I haven't planned it ahead of time. All right, let's try the four and the one. Four and the embossing folder. So we'll try this one, the four and the one. And there's a lot of techniques you can do with these. You can ink them up and that kind of thing. And it just pulls it right through. Normally, what am I doing? Goodness. Going. Sheesh. I don't usually have issues, you guys. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> that figures. Hi, Cindy. Thanks for watching. Oh my goodness, I'm like struggling right now, and I just wish I wouldn't have even tried this. Don't know why. Here we go. Wow, people, it's not usually hard. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I'm doing here, but maybe that's what happens when you're on live, right? Ugh. Okay, so I'm just showing how the embossing machine works. <laughs> oh, you'd think it's the first time I've ever used it, right? Okay, so then I'm going to sh show you. You get this beautiful embossed piece. Um, hopefully the camera's picking that up pretty well. And that's just kind of how your embossing folders work. With, and that's the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And let's go ahead and start on our project. All right. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is pull in the supplies that I've decided to use tonight. Um, I'm going to bring in my little box of goodies. And I'm gonna get this stamping and embossing stuff out of the way that I'm done with. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is use the stamp set um, called Hello Beautiful. And this has kind of that geometric, kind of a whimsical look to it. Um, it says, let's see, this calls for a celebration. First of all, you're amazing. I miss your face. Hello, beautiful. Thank you. And so happy to know you. And it's a photopolymer stamp set that is clear. You can see that. And then it also has a coordinating um, die set called Beautiful Shapes Dies. And that comes with all of these shapes and it's kind of that geometric look to it. And tonight I'm going to be using these three dies. And you can use any dies that you have. Um, what the place, uh, the demonstrator that I saw that introduced this to me was saying you should maybe avoid the stitched dies. So you can try it though and see what happens. I hadn't done that yet. Um, but I just use these three nesting dies. Okay, you can use whatever shape you want and um, you can use whatever stamp set you want as well. Um, now along with this set, I'm going to show you in our mini catalog right now, we have the set in here that is, I had it marked and then it must have fallen out, of course, <laughs> when I had my little oh, uh, time there a minute ago. Um, so we are going to turn to page 48 and 49, and that is where it's showing this suite of products called um, Abstract Beauty. And then you can see the stamp set that I just showed, that I was just showing you. It comes with these, um, what are they called? Abs uh, adhesive backed hexagons, and those are... Um, a hexagon shaped um, mat dot. I'm going to show you those. We'll use those on this project. It comes, you can get these um, coordinating, um, what are they called, memories and more envelopes. They're just called abstract beauty cards and envelopes and those are really cool. They can, I'm not using those tonight, but they do come with a set that are um, really cool looking here. They have just real bright colors and you can do a lot with these. Um, they come with those as well. And so it's a set of coordinating. Uh, you have papers on the or lined envelopes already decorated on the inside there. So that's kind of fun and it goes along with the paper. Now the paper in this set is, this is the first time that I have seen Stampin' Up! do this. And I'm just gonna pull that in here. This paper only comes in a set of cards that are already cut to four by six. The paper is, it, usually we have six by six paper packs or four by six paper packs, but this is actually, no, not four by six. Six by six or 12 by 12. And this one comes in a four by six size. So that is a little bit unusual. And there are a lot of bright colors and just so much you can do with this. Kind of that artsy look to it. Some of them are more plain too. Um, of course, everything is two-sided. Uh, the metallic foil on here is really pretty. It's kind of a gold. Um, it's a gold metallic on a lot of the pages. Some of them just have that. You know, see, there's a lot to it. Probably my favorite is going to be this dark um, blue, the Knight of Navy with the gold foil on it which I'm not using tonight either, but there's just so many things you can do with this paper pack. And I am going to show you an example tonight of something you can do. So it does come with that. It also comes with what they call an ephemera pack. And basically those are just kind of like little coordinating things like die cuts and that kind of thing that, you c that go with it. Um, I'm gonna just use a couple of little hearts tonight. I'm not gonna do too much with this, but it is available if you um, want to use that. But I'm mainly gonna be using just the stamps and the dies, and then some coordinating goodies. Here are those um, hexagons that I was telling you about that comes in it. Um, they're matte and they're that same hexagon shape. They come in black, pink, Let's see, black, this is actually, the pink is Blushing Bride, and then either Bermuda Bay or Mint Macron. Either one would work, is kind of that. Actually, it's just jade, I bet. Just jade is the color of the green hexagons. So 
So we'll be using those. I'm going to be using the Black Memento ink and the Blushing Bride ink. And I have my uh, stamps ready. I'm going to be using the sentiment that says, Hello Beautiful. And I'm going to be using the stamp, just these like squiggly lines. You'll see that in a little bit more in a little bit. And then the sentiment that says, I miss your face. <laughs> it's just kind of funky, huh? Um, kind of snarky, I guess is how I think of it. So uh, I will be putting out a tutorial for this with all the cutting dimensions and everything. But So don't worry if you're not getting it right away tonight. I will have that put up um, very soon. And so let's bring that in. And I'm going to tell you kind of the cutting dimensions. But again, don't feel like you have to worry if you don't catch them all. Just getting all my junk out of the way here, pulling in my supplies for this project. I uh, will show you, uh, I'm not going to show you yet how it looks, but it's. I thought it was a cool looking project. All right, number one, for your base, you are going to take a piece of 8.5 by 11 paper, whatever color you're wanting the base of your card to be, and you're going to cut it at four and a quarter by 11. So the width on this big mambo thing here, you can see four and a quarter by 11. Now when you are cutting this out on your trimmer, if you have a trimmer that you're using, you're cutting your eight and a half by 11 in half this way, and then you're gonna be doing some scoring. So the scoring that you're gonna be doing is at, make sure I'm on there okay, you're gonna score at four and one fourth. I already did this, so put the old arm out. Four and one fourth, then five and one fourth, and nine and a half. This is the base of the card, nine and a half, and ten and a half. All right, so that is the base scored. And then you're going to choose two more colors that are going to coordinate with your project. And you're going to use the cardstock, um, two pieces of that. So I chose for this one, I'm going to use uh, Blushing Bride. And I'm going to use, um, let's see here, what was my other one? Is it the gray? Yeah. Then I'm going to use this um, lighter gray color, which is our gray Yowza. Which gray is that? Let me get my little samples here. We have so many colors. It's sometimes, especially for similar colors, if you're not sure, this is really nice to have because then you can figure out, oh, which gray is that or which yellow is that or whatever. And so, let's see, that must be crumb cake. All right, there it is. So this light gray that I'm using is Smoky Slate. Okay, so I have a piece of... Smoky Slate, that is four and one fourth by five. And then the Blushing Bride is the same size, four and one fourth by five. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna score in from each edge at three eighths of an inch. So three eighths is if you go to one fourth and then a half of another section there, that's three eighths. If you're not sure about that, if that's kind of confusing for you, another way that you can do it is to um, put your trimmer on, let's see here, you could put it, put it on four and five eighths over on this side and that'll score it on three eighths on that side. So whichever works best for you. So three eighths of an inch in on each side for both of these pieces. All right. and. Then you're gonna be picking out some of our designer series paper from the paper pack. Oh, you do also want one uh, four inch square piece of smoky slate, or you could use white, whatever you're using. Um, then you're going to choose whichever designer series paper you wanna use on your project. You can use you know, you don't even have to use designer series paper. You could use all just colored cardstock. You could, uh, one of the samples I saw, they just used 
the same color and um, used an embossing folder add texture and didn't even use designer series paper but I really love this paper so I thought it would work really well for this and so I am going to be using um, on this layer I'm going to use this piece on the gray one I'm going to use um, let's see I was going to use just this polka dot one and again these are four by four and then this square is going to go on the base and then you're going to use a four inch square piece that's going to go um, on the front of the card and a four inch white piece that's going to go on the back of the card. This will all make more sense very soon. All right, so we have our cutting and scoring done. And so grab a bone folder and we can go ahead and get our, um, you know, burnish on all of our folds. Hoping I'm close enough that you can see. I know sometimes black is really hard to see on camera. We'll do our best. Okay. For those of you catching this on the replay, thank you so much for watching. That's most of the time I see that most people watch this on the replay. So please share with others and um, let me know. I think it'd be fun to hear, see where you're all from. And um, leave some comments or questions if you'd like. This is our base, okay? So how it's going to work is this panel right here is going to be the front and actually I'm wrong it's going to be around like this so this is going to be my front so if you stretch it out and you have it this way this is going to be the front of your card and it is going to just come around like this and we're going to adhere that together we're not going to do that yet but that's kind of the general layout of this piece then we are going to burnish these colored pieces all right so we have these two and they had just that three-eighths of an inch um gusset or a little part on the side you're going to fold those up and burnish them upwards it doesn't really matter because you can flip it obviously but um in my mind i'm thinking i want that to go upwards which is a valley fold okay and again, it doesn't really matter because you could flip it over. So just burnish those the same direction. Okay. Then what we can do is we are going to adhere those designer series paper pieces onto these two layers. So I'm going to take this one. The polka dot one is going to go on there. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to use um, seal stamp and seal you can use um, let's see tear and tape would work well if you want to use uh, if you you could also use your liquid adhesive um, just I would maybe avoid the center if you're going to use the liquid adhesive because it might just make a little bit of a mess if it's still wet when you're um, when you are cutting that out uh, with the stamp and cut and emboss machine with the dies all right, so let's get that roughly in the center. This isn't really going to show a lot, so it doesn't have to be perfect and, you know, everything that's just going to show a little bit in the tunnel. And then we'll do this Blushing Bride piece. Okay. All right, so we're going to put that in the center of this one. Again, this doesn't show a lot, just a small part of it. You could maybe even get by with a smaller piece if you have, if you're kind of short on paper or something. Um, now I'm going to bring in my tear and tape, and we're going to put that on these flaps. Um, and so if you're with the paper up, the designer series paper up, you're going to flip it over and put it on that side, okay? tear and tape on these edges then. We're going to put one of them there and one of them on this side and do the same with the gray. Smoky slate I think it was, right? Flip it over and put a little tear and tape on there. Tear and tape is very strong 
So once it's adhered into place, it'll hold that really well. So it works good for things that are going to move around a little bit and have structure. I kind of like that. All right, so that's how that goes. And hopefully I'm not too close now, maybe. All right, next, we are going to figure out what we're going to do for stamping. So now one of these layers is going to go on the back side and one of these is going to be your focal point in the middle of your tunnel, okay? So we're gonna have a tunnel of shapes and then we're gonna have a focal point which is a message that we're gonna put there. So we'll start with that one and um, I miss your face, I decided I'm gonna put on the back and um, Hello Beautiful is going to go um, part of that focal point on the, on the front, I guess you'd say. So I am using the Memento Black ink to make that pop up really well. Okay, and hopefully I can get this where it belongs in the center, nice and straight. All right. Okay, I think that'll be just fine. If you mess it up, then you do the other side. If you mess that up, then you stamp it and cut it out and try again. Or maybe you could die cut a hexagon shape or a circle or something and put over it. So it does not hurt anything if you don't get it perfect right away. You can always work your way around that. Trust me, I've had a lot of experience with that. So I'm going to take the squiggly line here and put that underneath the Hello Beautiful. Okay, so that's how that looks. And that's our focal point. So then we can do the back. And the back was on the white here. Gosh, I just don't want it to be, you know, too close or too far away. So I'm not sure how it's looking to everybody there. All right, so I'm gonna use the black ink as well for the I Miss Your Face. And I'm gonna be putting this on here. I'm going to have it up a little bit just to leave room for a message or whatever you would like to write on there. So then I'm going to try to get this fairly straight. Hey, I'm lucky tonight. My, uh, huh, everything's going my way. Well, not especially with the machine earlier, but we'll forget about that. All right, and then I do want to use this same squiggly line, or if you'd rather, you can use any of those other um, parts I'll show you here. Any of these kind of fun things would be nice on there as well. Um, for example, we could go, mm, I'm just thinking which would work. You could make it like stand out a little bit maybe, and use, let's use this, it, you know, just kind of, Looks like a little puddle of something. <laughs> um, let me get my uh, the right size of stamping block here. So I'm just going to use a real light ink, the Blushing Bride, and I'm going to go right over the sentiment here. Um, I'm first going to try it on my scrap paper here just to make sure it's not too dark. And um, I don't know if you can see, I kind of did it off a little bit. So what I like to do is stamp it a, a time or two and just see first generation, second generation, third generation. Kind of gives you an idea of how light and dark it's going to be. I think I'm just going to go real light. So I'd like the second one. So I'm going to do what they call stamp off. To get a little bit of the ink off. And then just go ahead and put it right over. I miss your face. So it just kind of makes it stand out a little bit. And then you could decorate in any number of ways. You could try to make it similar to our front. This is our color scheme that we're going to be using. Um, but that color matches there. The black does. You could use maybe some gold. But I think what I'm going to do is just... Um, I know what I was going to try to find. I have some ephemera hearts I was going to use. But, just like I figure, what did I do with them? Um, what I'll do actually is... I'll find some. Let's see. 
Uh, let's find something on here. So this is the ephemera sheets, you know, that come with it. Um, I don't know what I want to put on there. The pieces that I really wanted, I already cut out, and they were those hearts. Um, I could do these, maybe. They're just kind of a little strip. And I could even just have that kind of go right here, um, like so. That would work. I think that's what I'm going to do. So let's get some adhesive on the back of that. Just a little bit here. And it just adds a little bit more of a decorative touch to it. Um, again, now you could just leave it alone. You could uh, do a lot of stuff on there. So you can make it yours. Do it the way that you like. And so this is going to be the back. Just want to make sure it's nice and clean here. All right, we're getting there. Um, it's almost time to die cut and assemble. Um, let's see. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to adhere the piece that goes on the back. And you're going to want to look at your sample or your base piece and kind of plan in your mind. Um, once again, if you remember, the side... So the side, if you open it up like this and your folds go back, this is going to come around and it's going to adhere right there. And so this is the front. That means this is the back. Okay, so let's put the back piece on there. Right in the center. Like so. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I wonder what that was. I have to spill something during each live, don't I? Well, thanks, Cindy. Yeah, I like this, too. It's just really different and kind of versatile. Kind of classy, some of it. Yet, I don't know. It's just kind of versatile. You could do a lot with it. All right, so then that was the back. So now we want to figure out what is the, set, the inside. This is going to be a hole here. So that means this is going to be the inside where our focal point's going to go. Okay, so I'm going to, so here's your back piece. On the opposite side of that is where this is going to go. Okay, so we'll attach that while we're knowing what's going on here before we forget what's what. <laughs> it's kind of confusing until you do it. All right, so... And this piece is not going to get cut or anything, so you don't have to worry about that. Just want it to go the same direction, of course. And... All right. There we go. Hello, beautiful. <coughs> okay. So here is the back, and this is going to be the front. So we are going to put our designer series paper that has, for me, the most pattern or whatever it is that you want on the front of your card. It's going to go there. <coughs> I'm going to need a drink of water, excuse me. All right. All right, so designer series paper goes on here. And of course, since it's a square, you can choose, you know, you can move it around and see which side you want up or down, that kind of thing. All right, so now you are going to grab your dies, or yeah, the dies. We have these three sizes. All right, this is the biggest piece of our paper, right? Biggest paper, biggest die. And you can also decide, do you want it with the hexagon so that it goes like this with the flat edge up? Or you can turn it and have a point up. <coughs> Excuse me. Whichever you prefer. 
I am going to do it, I guess, with the point up. I don't think it really matters, but just whichever way you like to do it, or the look, whichever way you like the look of. Excuse my arm there. I'm grabbing post-it notes because we are going to be doing some die cutting. So I am going to try to get that in the center, just eyeing it so that pretty, you know, it might be rough. You can be more um, precise if you want, but it's not really going to be too much of a, it's not going to matter a whole lot. So we're, I'm going to do them one at a time though, and you'll see why in a moment. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring in my die cut machine, my the big one here. All right, so we need the um, we need the base one is number one, and then we need number two. Put those in, and then we need our scratchy plate, which is the number three plate, by the way. And then is it number three? Yeah, which is three. And then I'll have another three to go on top. So let's bring in our project here. I want to make sure you can see we're putting that here with the post-it notes holding that die in place okay so we will crank this through see I know how to use this oh, damn cut in a boss machine it's just the little one I was having issues with we're gonna be bringing that back in a moment because we got, we're going to be doing three different cuts. So this is the first one. Now you could use whatever you take out. Is not I don't have that used on our um, project, but you could use use it. You could put it on the back or do something else with it. I didn't. In fact, they came apart since they were layered, and I didn't use glue on them. So then you have those two pieces to use with whatever you want. And so you can see now we have a hole here. All right, this is kind of showing you how that's gonna go, right? But we're gonna have some more layers go in there. So the next one, you have to decide your order. Um, let's see, what I, I think I'm gonna do the Blushing Bride next. So that one will use the next size down. And what I'm gonna do is line up these now if I line up these score marks you're going to be able to see that they're the same size just got to make sure I'm putting it in the right spot okay so this is um, the opening here and that's I'm just going to put this right in the center of that it's a little bit smaller and I just want to have an even border all the way around Okay, and then I can just kind of hold it into place and then put my post-it on there. Like that. And we're going to run this one through now. not the easiest to show you because this take it in and out and in and out but um, I just kind of want to make sure you know kind of how this works if you haven't done a lot of that before then it might be confusing so if I just show that part even though it's a little bit of back and forth here um, at home you could have it set up just more convenient you know but since I'm demonstrating I'm gonna keep moving it back and forth and that one is done. Okay. And again, we're going to have these two pieces that came off that you can use to decorate or on another project. One more is this one. This one is going to use the smallest. 
and so what I'm going to do then is put these two together. This one that I just did and this one and it's showing me right where I need to put it put this one. Now you don't want to make sure that you don't use um, dies that are really really close in size because then it might not really show that difference or that tunnel as much. Um, so just feel free to you know kind of experiment with different sizes you can have graduated sizes you could try it all the same too or you could try different sizes or different shapes even do a square a circle and on you know just try different things and see kind of how that works for you so let's do the last one last time of this it looks like I'm wrestling with it <laughs> oh gosh it's just so big. All right, same sandwich as before, and then we're using that smallest copy. Okay. All right, done, done, done. Okay, doc. Now what do we got, huh? move these out of the way and put them in a place where I won't lose them and I think this piece comes out too yep so these will be put aside for another thing all right now we get to assemble the fun part assemble and decorate um, so we have these two pieces and we have this piece okay so we are going to assemble by taking, uh, we're going to do this one first. And this is the pink one, which is the one that's going to be closest to the front. And we're going to be putting it, now normally you kind of think of backwards as far, but we're, what we're going to do is adhere it like this. Can you see that a little bit? So to, in order to do that, we're going to start with one side, just do them one side at a time. And we're going to adhere this side to, we're going to go right here. So we're going to go up to this score right there. We want to make sure it's, well, I don't even know if I'm facing the right way. I don't think I am. I want it this way. I don't want to mess this up here. All right, so this is getting adhered on to this side flap. And if I zoom in closer, then you might be able to kind of see. I know it's hard to really show this because of the color and stuff, but here's that that um, fold, and here's this piece with the adhesive showing, and I'm just gonna go right up to that score, which I can't even see. like so. We just want to make sure that can close. Yes. Okay. Oh, I did it backwards. Oh my goodness. I knew I was going to do that. Ah! <laughs> Try again, people. Um, Teresa. All right. We want it this way. Am I messing this up? I'm confused, you guys. Like, I'm so used. I did this a, how many times? All right. <laughs> I know I want it right here. Oh. Confusing, right? Okay. That looking right? Yes, that's better. Okay. So this layer went right up to this crease like that and then this one is going to go these are the side parts you're adhering those flaps to the side I'm probably whoa way too close okay sorry guys um, so you're going to be adhering this strip onto this side piece next 
So let's go ahead and take the adhesive liner off. Take your pick tool would be good about now. Otherwise I rip it. Okay, so we are gonna adhere this next. Now, like I said, this is going to go onto the side piece. So let's put it, make sure I did it right. Okay, there we go. Um, you can see how that looks, right? So these flaps are adhered in that forward direction, but it, it makes it so that it leaves that 3 8 of an inch as a gap. And that gap helps it to look like that tunnel, okay? We are gonna put one more layer in there. This is just two of them, and this one's kind of bowed down right now, so it'll kind of go up a little more. So hopefully I can make this one a little easier. Um, let's do one side at a time again. <laughs> oh gosh. And it doesn't really matter which way you go with it, but it's just going to go right up next to this one that's already there. So I'm going to put this one right up to it, but you know, just leave a little bit of room. In my, oh, I gotta make sure I'm doing this right. I'm probably not. Okay, right here. <laughs> when I was doing this on my own, it, I don't know, I didn't have as much trouble, but I guess that just goes to show, you know, anytime you're trying to do something on camera, I swear it makes it harder. I don't know why. Um, then we're gonna do the other side. We're gonna adhere this one. So we'll take the liner off here. What do you think? Is that going to go in the right spot? Yep. All right, so I'm just pressing it down, pressing this over. And then that's going to go right into that, right next to the one that's already there. Maybe if I go this direction, you'll be able to see it better. And then once you fold it, press it that direction, it should go both directions. Um, easy, so by pushing it this way or you can push it this way too and that way when you um, when you are all done with it it's going to be able to go into an envelope because it's going to start like this but it'll collapse down and this will fit nicely into an envelope now right now it looks terrible but when you bring it out and you do that oh, isn't that cool just kind of I'll give you a little better look it kind of has that um, 3d effect to it now my back piece is kind of close uh, I don't have this back done yet so we can quick get that one done and I think I'll just use the seal for that you could use tear and tape too whichever you would want to use right on that flap and then I'm going to just press that down into place. All right. Back of the card where you write your message. Get all the little glue adhesive pieces off. And then the front. Hello, beautiful. Isn't that a fun? Now, I have seen this demonstrated with other dies. I made, I used other die sets for a couple of samples. I'm going to show you in a little bit. You can actually put things in here too that kind of stick out on the side, and that would really look nice as well. Let's go ahead and put a little some of those hexagons on there. And uh, of course, I didn't ever put them in a place that's just handy. Yes, I did. 
All right, adhesive back hexagons. I'm going to use the pink ones. You could, I could use black too, I guess. Um, whichever. Maybe the black will show up more. But either one would match perfectly. So I am going to take a larger one here. And, whoa, way off camera. I'm going to put one inside where our focal point is. And then I'm going to put two on the front. And I think what I'll do is, you can see they have smaller sizes here. Um, so there's one, two, three sizes of each color. And so I am going to grab the small ones. And then I'm going to put them just kind of along the bottom here. You could kind of do whatever you want. And then I'm going to put one, I think I'll put one in the back just to kind of add a little bling. I don't know. Ugh. It could be the eye and the miss. <laughs> I miss your face. All right, one more thing is I do like to put ribbon on there. <clears throat> And so let's, you could use whatever ribbon coordinates with this. I don't think it came with a coordinating ribbon in this suite. So I'm going to use some of this uh, fine art ribbon. <clears throat> and I am just going to kind of put that on the side here. So I'm going to cut it a little longer than I need because I'm going to just put a little knot in it. A K-N-O-T knot. <laughs> and... Just do your basic knot. Try to kind of keep that loop portion of it smoother and, you know, kind of play with it a little to get it where I want it, which is not right there. I want it down a little bit further. I don't necessarily want to put it in the middle, which I could though. You can put it wherever you want, but I'm going to have the knot just be off center a little bit. We could use either side, I think, but I like to just try to keep it a, a little bit of a smooth piece of fabric there. So I'm just going to use it like that, and I am going to put it on here, like so. And it's plenty long. I might cut and trim it just a little bit more. And I usually like to use the um, adhesive... Uh, dots, the dimension, not dimensionals, our little glue dots. And I'm going to use one of them on the top on the inside here. Whoops, it's jumping away from me. Like so. Because they really stick and hold nice and you can really push them down firmly. And then on this down here, I don't need that long of a ribbon. I'm going to trim some of it off, um, maybe even a little more. I don't want it to be too long, but then I'm going to put um, another glue dot on the back of the ribbon here. And that's just going to hold it right where I want it to go. Fold that over and press it down really hard. And then it'll grab it and it won't let go. <laughs> okay. So there is a little bit of ribbon on here. Just something a little different. What do you think? I hope you like it. Hopefully it'll inspire you. Even if this isn't your maybe standard or your go-to style of, um, or cardstock, maybe you're, you know, maybe like brights or florals or whatever, use whatever you have and then adjust it, the colors, uh, the stamps, everything, you can just adjust it to what you like and, or who you're giving it to, that kind of thing. I'm going to show you some other samples. Um, here is one using the same set that's very similar. This calls for a celebration. I have some of the gold um, ephemera there. And then I use the, the Just Jade 
for the Stampin' or the, um, here I gotta get in a good spot. Okay, the Just Jade is what I used for the hexagons on this one. Um, you can see the layers there. And then on the back, Happiest Birthday Wishes. I put a little strip of the designer series paper back here that was used inside and maybe I'll do that on my other one I just made too and that kind of ties that in a little bit more and again these fold flat to go right into an envelope our standard four and a quarter five and a half envelope and another one using the same set um, this time I used the gold thread on it. I kind of like that. And I used our gold butterflies that we have right now. Um, I thought that was kind of pretty on there. And I stamped Celebrate Every Beautiful Thing on there. And a little gold butterfly there. This one I used the gold foil also. And I used, obviously, the nested nesting circles dies. And so this was a circle rather than the shape. Um, and you can use what you have if you have any three that are the same only graduated um, that should work well for that and then I use this little girl chasing her butterflies back here with another of the brass butterflies or the metallic all right then um, this is a more of a kind of a simpler type um, I used uh, the same color on the front and put that through the embossing machine and this one was just kind of a wood grain look that I had and you could um, you could just go ahead and you know decorate this however you want. I left it very simple on purpose just because I thought sometimes it looks cool just to leave it that way. And then I used some of those shapes down the side there on the back. And again, you'd be able to write your message here to somebody. You could add bling, you could add ribbon, um, folds flat. And then this one is quite a bit different. <laughs> I used, we have that, the waves set right now, and this is what I did. This one has a lot going on. It might be a bit much, um, but I used the paper and everything from that new set that we have, the waves um, stamp set. This is what is in that one. Uh, Happy birthday is part of it. It comes with this die to cut out this little banner, and that's what the designer series paper is. I used some of our um, Mother of Pearl paper to cut this white layer of the wave, and then it also comes with uh, the silver, the Bermuda Bay, and then, oh, I don't know if it's, the darker blue is the other foil that comes with this paper set. And I don't know, I want to make sure you can kind of see what's going on. There's um, just layers of waves that go back and through there. So it kind of has, I made them a little bit higher going back. I also use that mother of pearl paper to cut out the birds and the, um, and the cloud there. So it's kind of that seascape look. <laughs> uh, and then this is the stamp that comes with that. Isn't that cool? I love it. You're totally awesome. You're so totally awesome is the stamp sentiment that came in with it that I used on this one. So again, this just folds flat. Yay, huh? Fun. I love that set. It's so cool. Uh, I think that's all I have. Huh. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have some um, ideas now of what how to use some of your nesting dies. Um, I'm just seeing if anyone has any questions. I don't see anything. Um, thank you, Cindy, for saying the wave one is super cool. I appreciate that. By the way, um, so last month, uh, the last two months, we had a drawing for a stamp set for any of my customers who placed an order. I put your name in a, um, in a hat and I drew that out for this, uh, this lovely, amazing silhouette stamp set. And the winner was Cindy Markison, and I think she's the one who's watching right now. So I'm so glad you're on here so I could show you that you were the winner of the drawing. Um, and if you happen to already have this stamp set, then we can work something out for another one. So congratulations to her. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if you have any samples. If you try this card and um, let me know. I would love to see it and I'd love to post that up on either YouTube or Facebook. I'm on both right now. Um, hopefully, at least that was the plan. And I believe that Alexander is, is watching on YouTube and Joan and Cindy are watching me on Facebook. So uh, it's kind of fun to be 
be able to do, be doing two things at once. Um, so you guys um, have some fun crafting. Keep in touch, and we will see you next time. Thank you.